Hello, welcome to a talky episode of Will Wright's Books. It's been a while. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow I'll be able to make some more talkies, and then <clears throat> I think Saturday I'll be able to make a few talkies. So, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, I have been making talkies. Uh, sorry, not talkies, silent, silent movies. And the silent movies have been with me writing. And let's see, I've got a writing log in my Imperishable Wonderland GitHub repo. Let's see how we're doing. Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday. Well, Friday did four sessions. Tuesday. Okay, so there was a Wednesday and Thursday I skipped. Monday, Sunday. All right, so when's the first day? March 11th, it's March 28th. Uh, I think I only skipped those two days. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I could go through and, and check, but I've been writing most every day. I think it's okay to take an occasional... Uh, day off if I want to. I, I thought about writing only six days a week, just give myself a little build and break or uh, five days a week. But yeah, so long as I'm feeling it, I think I can write seven days a week. Um, so that's good. I, I don't always write a lot. Sometimes I'll do you know, less than 30 minutes in a day. You know, sometimes it's like, well, it's after midnight or it's just about midnight. I haven't written today, haven't made a video. Let me record a video of me writing silently. And then I try to process it overnight, uh, which means while I'm sleeping. You know, usually I can sleep with the fan running because the fan goes on on the computer. But um, yeah, so that's uh, I've been pretty good about doing it, except for those two days. And I don't, well, I, I had had some work issues that, you know, just like busy not issues, but really busy with work. Um, I wonder if those were from the days I was busy with work. Anyway, I'm not sure. Um, but in any case, I've mostly been recording videos of me writing. They've mostly been silent. <clears throat> so I was just going to talk a little bit about how I'm doing with the writing. So first of all, like I said, I'm writing almost every day, which that's good. Um, sometimes I'm getting multiple writing sessions in. Um, you know, I think my longest I had with those four writing sessions. So probably wrote for two, two and a half hours that day. A lot of times I'm writing more like half an hour. Um, yeah, it's fine. And then in the beginning I had like a clock and I would do like a half an hour time down, you know, time, you know, countdown. Um, and partly that was just to protect my wrists. I, have my wrist guard thingies and that those, those seem to help. Um, so <clears throat> as long as I'm using the wrist guards, I I'm typing on my laptop keyboard almost exclusively. Mm, it works okay. Um, with the wrist guards, I just have to be careful not to do it. If I'm like laying on a couch, laying back on a couch with the, it was like, that's not good for my wrist. That one I feel pretty quickly. Um, but usually I'm able to find find a way to do it pretty comfortably if, if with the wrist guards. If I'm only going to type for a few minutes, I don't need the wrist guards. But if I'm typing longer term, that seems to help. So um, originally, I was going to write 11 books this year when I decided to write books. And that was to go with 1,000 videos, which became 1,024 videos, the Kilo Tube, And... My first book was, and I was going to do one book per month. Um, and it was 11 videos, I'm sorry, 11 books instead of 12 because I started, you know, into the year. And the first book was going to be kind of a warm up book, and it was going to be about creative thinking, um, that kind of thing. And it ended up being kind of meta, and I was trying to learn how to type on the Dvorak, and I don't know. It, it didn't seem to be going anywhere, uh, at least not anywhere quick. And then 
I was like, oh, I should write a book on um, the most beautiful program ever written. And that got me into a sort of a different mode of thinking. It's like, oh, yeah, that'd be a cool book to read, to write. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I wanted to do this Imperishable Wonderland book. Uh, that's something I've been thinking about for a long time. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just do that because that's something I really care about. And so I started this Imperishable Wonderland uh, GitHub repo. And, uh, you know, I, I started with LaTeX and then I backed off and started doing Markdown with Pandoc, which is okay. It's not beautiful, but, you know, uh, there there is advantage to having something that's effectively plain text. Um, and and uh, so I got the infrastructure ready for that book. And then I thought, well, all right, so the next thing I have to do, really, the next thing I want to do is collect um, you know, sort of all the stuff that I know about mini Canron and relational programming so I can sort of curate that and sort of pick through the really cool stuff. And that will go in the imperishable wonderland of infinite fun. So I started that and I started recording videos of me, you know, collecting these ideas and I've got a, I've got a file. Let's see, where is it? Topics.txt file, um, in the repo. And you know, you know, I've curated just a little bit, but I've got quite a few topics at this point. I've, let's see, it's got a 927 lines, and I think some of these lines span, you know, the the more than 80 characters or whatever. And uh, you know, so I started working on those topics, and then I realized, oh well, okay, I should look at the GitHub repos, and then I realized, oh yeah, some of my Git repos or you know things like that are private where I haven't made them public sometimes because I'm working with other people. Maybe this is work that we might publish on. And, um, it's, it's, it gets a little tricky when you're working with other people cause they might not want to make it public. So I started another private, uh, topics file. And, uh, the idea is I go through that and then I can sort of merge them and start curating. And I eventually started getting bored of that. <laughs> it's like, and I couldn't make videos of that one. And I was like, okay, I've I've done enough, enough of this just writing down a giant list. So I thought, well, if I'm going to go to this trouble of curating things, you know, maybe I can record it in in a book. So, um. I started a new book, which I think I think this is the right order. Uh, this was Will's Big Bad Boring Brain Dump on Relational Programming. And so this book started as, you know, just a bunch of topics from topics.txt or I've added some that I've just thought of and, and mailed myself. That's what I usually do. I just either put notes on my phone or or uh, email myself with some notes. And, uh, okay, so I'm just trying with this book to get down a whole bunch of things that I know or think I know about relational programming and Mini Canron. Um, you know, partly for me to organize myself and so I can draw from things for the Imperishable Wonderland, and partly just to try to get everything down, every topic I can think of. Uh, just because if you're trying to get into relational programming or, you know, maybe get into the research aspects of it or you're just curious, it's it's useful to know what connections there are to other areas or what what other programming languages exist maybe that maybe you haven't heard of. <clears throat> For example, there's a programming language called Girdle which is really interesting um, that I hadn't heard of for a long time, or if I had heard of it, I certainly hadn't looked into it. But that really is a relational programming language. Um, it's very different than Mini Kenrin, but if you re read the uh, the preface to that book, it's like, oh, that could have been written by a Mini Kenrin pro programmer. <clears throat> um, so things like that, you know, where it's like, well, I know about these things now, so I should just go ahead and write them down so that... <clears throat> Um, other people at least know that they exist. And then there's also just, um, 
people are asking me questions about mini Canron and I'm working with a number of students and also people are asking questions on the discord server, those sorts of things. I was like, huh, well, if I'm going to talk about these and I'm thinking about some of these issues, maybe it'd be good to just write it down somewhere. Um, that way I don't have to keep repeating myself and uh, I can improve my answer over time and, you know, maybe my understanding will change over time and I can sort of polish it. But in any case, um, you know, if I'm answering questions from 10 different people, uh, well, some of those 10 people probably have questions that were asked by other people. They probably have the same question. Uh, so maybe I just go ahead and start writing these things down. And and so this this book, along with the topics um, and the writing log go in the perishable subdirectory of the imperishable wonderland in the imperishable subdirectory is is the imperishable book and an imperishable wonderland of infinite fun a relational view of computation now this book i have to say i've done almost nothing on so you know basically i haven't done anything on it other than come up with a title and types out a PDF with this basically empty except for a CC by 4.0 license. Um, and, and I'm feeling kind of precious about this book, you know, probably too precious. Um, and it's kind of interesting that, you know, my, my philosophy for writing these books in the perishable uh, section has been you know, get it done, or like Eric Edson says, uh, write badly with pride. Um, or as I say, what write poorly, proudly. And I, you know, it's just like a brain dump. Um, just trying to get things down. Uh, or like this quote I heard, which was something like, the worst finished book is better than the best unfinished book, you know, that kind of thing. So that's, uh, that's my philosophy for this brain dump. And I have worked on it for a number of sessions. So, you know, like it feels like it goes really slowly, but you know, if I keep working on it every day or I'm not working on this book every day as we'll, as we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but if I work on this, you know, a couple sessions every week, you know, over, over time that will add up and it will grow into something. I've, I've tried doing these sorts of documents before in the past, usually as like a paper or as a technical note. And I usually get freaked out by how slowly it seems uh, to be taking. And it's like, well, that's just the, the nature of this thing. It's just going to take a while for it to sort of coalesce. And, you know, even just getting down the questions and the topics I want to talk about you know, has taken a number of sessions. So, um, you know, if I think about this long term, this is something that I'll, I'll work on hopefully for for years and keep adding to and polishing. You know, if I think about, about it on the time span of years, which isn't unreasonable because, you know, the first uh, edition of the Reason Schemer was published in 2005. So that was, you know, 19 years ago. Wow, a long time ago, you know. So if I had had a document like this that I'd been maintaining, you know, even for half that time, you know, it, it would be very polished probably at this point, or at least, you know, have a lot in it. And I don't know how polished it'd be, but it have a lot in it. So um, I started working on that because I was like, eh, instead of just having a big list of topics, how about I actually start elaborating on them some? And... As I was working on that, I uh, ended up starting another book. I think the next one was this uh, Confused Will's Big List of Things He'd Like to Know About Relational Programming. You know, So one of the things I want to be very clear of is I don't know anything about relational programming or mini Kendron. In fact, I feel like I know very little uh, I, I think, like, you know, they're, they're, uh, both Alan Kay and and uh, Jerry Sussman have been very clear on this point, and I agree with them. And 
um, you know, also Joe Armstrong, uh, the, like basically we we're sort of in a mess programming wise, not it, sort of like we are in a mess and we don't know how to do it very well. Um, and, uh, I definitely feel about that, that about relational programming or logic programming or constraint logic programming. I feel like there's some things we've found that, that seem to work pretty well, but in general, I don't feel like, uh, I feel like it's still very immature in a lot of ways, even though prolog has been long for a long time, around for a long time. Um, you know, I, I just don't feel like, I don't feel like we know how to write software using, using, uh, these approaches very well, or know how to do computation very well. Um, and as one piece of evidence, I would, <laughs> I would give is, you know, the, the reviews I get from, or the, the, the comments I've gotten from experienced prologue programmers on some of the mini Canron work has been, you know, a mixture of everyone knows you can do that because that's like folklore and all, every prologger knows that. And then at the same time, about the same piece of work, they'll say, everyone, everyone knows that's impossible. And it's like, well, okay, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting accusation <laughs> that that's like, well, we know you, what you're, what you're claiming you can do can't possibly be right because we have 40, 50 years experience in prologue saying that you can't do it. And at the same time, it's like completely obvious that you could do it. So somehow, and, and I've, I've been told this by multiple prologue programmers at this point. So I don't think it's just like one person. I think that there is this kind of view that, well, yeah, you know, we, we understand in theory you could do certain things, but in practice you can't. I think that's really the argument. It's like, well, of course, it's not surprising in some sense that you could write that program, but obviously you'll never be able to get it to, to work in an interesting way. I think that's really what they're trying to communicate, not very clearly. But I think in some cases we've shown in, in Mini Canron or with a, a more relational perspective than you see in, say, standard prologue programming that it is possible to go further than you would you would guess from, say, reading prologue textbooks. Um, and uh, so, you know... It's like, oh yeah, the prologue people, they, they've spent a lot of time working on a certain type of sort of logic-inspired programming, but it's very clear to me that, you know, they haven't figured it all out. I, I, th I think actually in a lot of ways they've gone the wrong direction if you care about relationality. I think the decisions they made by default are not good decisions for relational programming, and uh, most prologue programmers, as far as I can tell, aren't even sure, you know, they, they don't even know which parts of Prolog really are relational. Um, so anyway, I, I think it's a big mess right now. And it's pretty confusing. We can do some things in Mini Canrin, but, you know, we're kind of poking around at the margins. So um, anyway, so this, this book is my big list of things I'd like to know about relational programming. This isn't things in, in the past I would have liked to have been told. These are things I'd like to know right now that I just don't know about and I'm confused about. So I'm confused almost all the time about relational programming. Um, so there, there are techniques I know that work, you know, to a certain degree, but, you know, I'm almost always very frustrated uh, trying to write a mini Kenner program. It's not because I don't know how to write Mini Canron. It's more like Mini Canron's not up to the task, or I'm not up to the task, or techniques aren't up to the task. So, you know, uh, so for example, I'm starting to get into uh, reversible computing. I've uh, off camera, you know, no videos, but I've been reading a reversible computing paper, um, you know, and. It's very interesting. I'm seeing all all sorts of possible connections and uh, have all sorts of questions. So I'm so you know instead of just writing these down on a notepad, which I'll probably lose, I'm starting to write down uh, some some of the questions uh, that I have about this sort of work. Um, and you know I'm just starting to write down questions I have in general. Um, yeah. Okay. One one weird thing with Pandoc is. For whatever reason, these subject headings, um, they, they get 
cut off. So I, I'm starting to go back and put to dos, uh, placeholders, you know, between each of these lines so that at least you can see all the questions. So I don't know what's going on here. We got one page SKI combinator uh, basis. Um, anyway, so that that feels like a different a different book to me. Um, and, and also, you know, I'm trying to be honest about it. It's like, I don't, I don't know that much. Right. So I've got a big, bad, boring brain dump of things that I've, I've stumbled across that I think are interesting. Um, doesn't mean they are interesting. Doesn't mean they're right or have the right perspective. And then here, here are my confused questions. Cause I'm confused all the time. Um, and then the next book that uh, I ended up with is Will's Dubious and Opinionated Collection of Mini Canron and Relational Programming Resources. And the reason I started this one was, it's like, well, you know, one thing I'd like to do is go through all the papers that have been published or, or that are out there on Mini Canron and on relational programming that I think are important or interesting or, you know, I mean, at some point, I'd like to have every paper, I think, on Mini Kenrin. Um, I'd like to collect all of those, and I would like to say something about them, about what's in them and what I think is interesting, even if it's just for myself. That's something I want to go do for a long time. For one reason, you know, it forced me to read those papers and read them closely because, you know, I, I haven't even read all the uh, Mini Kenrin workshop papers, partly because if I'm running the Mini Kenrin workshop, for example, which I've run a couple times, you know, I'm conflicted with so many of those papers that, you know, I never even get a chance to look at them. And then it's like, well, I'll go back and, and read those papers later. It's like, yeah, maybe not. Um, that, that sort of assumes a certain way I'm going to allocate my time in the future, which usually is not the way it actually happens. Um, so, so for this book, I want to have an annotated bibliography and I want to list different learning resources and you know, talk about the major mini Kenrin implementations and all these sorts of things and just sort of collect all the resources. And one reason I want to do this is not only would this be useful for people who are doing re uh, research in mini Kenrin uh, and, and force me, of course, to read these papers and that kind of thing, but the questions that I get from people, which is, okay, I am a, a Rust programmer uh, and I'm interested in mini Kenrin which implementation do I start with? Or, you know, I'm, I, uh, I, I notice that there are two different versions of the reason schemer and their implementations seem to be different. Like, you know, how do they differ? All that sort of thing. Um, how do, how do I think about those? You know, what's this alpha Canron stuff? So I would like to kind of lay out whatever resources there are for people and just kind of give, give a little commentary from my perspective. So it's, you know, somewhat opinionated in what, in what I pick. I mean, there's a zillion micro Canron implementations. You know, most of those are, are exercises people did to try to understand micro Canron or mini Canron, which is great. Most of those implementations probably aren't uh, something someone's going to care about unless they happen to say, do their own micro Canron in the same language and they want to compare their implementation to another. Um, but, you know, having 500 micro Canrons uh, that don't be, go beyond micro Canron, unless they use an interesting implementation technique, yeah, those aren't so interesting. But there are a few micro -can Canron or mini Canron implementations that are uh, sort of unusual or, you know, maybe they're faster, or they're optimized, whatever it is that, the, that are worth knowing about if you are getting into mini Canron. It's like, okay, here are thing, here are implementations you should know about. Um, these are the ones that people tend to use and practice either for research or, you know, if they're trying to do something more pragmatic and, and they have different design, you know, decisions based on how pragmatic they're trying to be or what sort of research problems they're trying to address. So just trying to kind of collect all that. What are the, what are the resources out there for learning mini Canron? you know, sort of, sort of a resource, uh, curated, opinionated, but hopefully fair, uh, collection of resources. Now, as these books, uh, the number of these books accumulate, part of it is, 
in the past, I've tried to write papers or I've started to write a book where I would include, you know, all of these different types of, of things that are currently breaking out in the books. And I always found it really awkward because, you know, uh, like the Imperishable Wonderland book, I want that to be really focusing on the mind-blowing parts of relational programming, the, the parts that might make someone's jaw drop. Well, that's different than here's a giant brain dump, and that's and that's different than here's just a, here's an annotated bibliography of every paper ever written on Mini Canon. They, they feel like just very different things, and so by breaking them into different documents, now maybe at some point I figure out a way uh, once I've you know, made progress on these individual books. Maybe at some point I say, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll write a big book, like a really big book that includes information for all of them. Yeah, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't, I personally don't like 700 page books uh, that are technical, like, like very few of those. Uh, I don't like them that much. So I'd rather kind of keep them smaller and more uh, targeted. And let's see. So then the latest book, which I started unexpectedly to myself last night, although not completely unexpectedly since I'd been um, tossing this over in my head a little bit, which is a new book called How I Think About Relational Programming. And, and the idea of this book is I do have certain mental models. Maybe mental models, too fancy, too strong a word, but... There are certain ways that I think about relational programming or mini Canrin, um, or if I'm trying to write a mini Canrin program or debug one in my head or think about how something might work or think about how I might, you know, go about writing constraint or, you know, uh, if someone shows me a mini Canrin change they've made? How do I think about that? How do I decide if I think that's a good change? If it, if it's in the spirit of mini Canron, you know, it may, it may be a perfectly fine change in some sense, uh, but it may be a fine change that, you know, is in a direction other than the relationality direction. It's maybe, may, maybe it's in a very pragmatic direction. Maybe it's more like a lot of the prologue decisions, and that might be fine. And maybe for pragmatic problems, all of those design decisions hang together. That's what Joe Armstrong said, is that there aren't good or bad languages. The languages are designed to solve certain problems, and you know a language is good or bad really in the context of the problem it's trying to solve. And you can ask, do the design decisions hold together? That's how Joe Armstrong looked at it. So... I could look at it the same way there, but what are the things that I consider important for relational programming? What are the essence of, you know, how would I uh, assess, you know, a new language that someone says, hey, I've got a great new relational language. How would I think about it? Um, this came up when I saw verse, the verse uh, calculus and the verse language. And, um, and f from a functional scan standpoint or a Lisp standpoint, you know, that came up when I first saw Clojure. As a, like I, I was very much in the scheme mindset when I first saw Clojure, and uh, and I was kind of bewildered. I didn't understand until much later sort of what Rich Hickey was trying to do. And that, that was my first response to Verse as a kind of like, oh, huh, this isn't what I thought. Um, so I want to learn more about the context of, of Verse and the decisions made because um, it looked different than I expected, very different. Um, and maybe those design decisions hang together really well. I think for closure in hindsight, yeah, I think those decisions do, for the most part, hang together really well for that language, given what Rich Hickey was trying to do. And, and maybe it's exactly the same for verse, given what they're trying to do. Um, so... You know, but but in any case, uh, you know, how do I feel about think about relational programming? I would like to write down some of those things because, you know, some of those models I heard from other people, and I probably wouldn't have guessed them anytime soon. Um, and some models, you know, I've kind of, you know, probably based on things I I heard from other people, I sort of developed my own 
way of looking at it. Um, so anyway, just uh, kind of writing down a bit about high level philosophy, how I see things. Once again, that's a different thing to me than say like an annotated bibliography. That's uh, could go into a lar- long, longer work, but it, it is kind of its own thing. And it felt like, uh, you know, I was starting to, you know, this is, this is an example where I emailed myself. Um, I'd have some convers I'd had some conversations with people recently trying to learn mini Canron and, uh, some of these topics came up and, uh, you know, so I emailed myself a bunch of these topics and then I started trying to do it in the big brain dump book. Um, and it didn't really feel like it fit. So in the middle of that recording last night, I started a new book. It's like, well, let me, let me try to get it to work, uh, to get it to fit. And then it didn't, uh, feel like it fit to me. And in fact, some of the big brain dump stuff to me feels like it does need to be moved to somewhere else. Um, you know, so, you know, that's part of it is uh, I feel like, uh, you know, if you look in, uh, you know, like a, a wood shop or a shop where people are making things. There are different places for different tools. And that's kind of how I feel right now. I want to try to write down or get down these things that I, that I'm thinking about or have learned about, or I'm curious about, or want to do with the mini Canon relational programming. I want to get down as much of that as I can. And, uh, you know, every time I'm trying to write into one book, I'm calling these books, you know, maybe they become websites or something. It doesn't matter. It's Pandoc, right? Um, every time I'm writing one of these books, I, I notice over time that there's certain things I'm trying to add that don't seem to fit very well. So, you know, it's like, huh, eh, maybe I should do a book. Maybe I should do a new book. So my current plan is I'm happy to keep doing that, um, you know, to, to keep adding. As long as I'm keep keeping writing, I want to write most every day. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the number of books creeps up as I organize more of the topics and kind of move things around. And, you know, maybe at some point they'll, co- they'll coalesce again. But, you know, I, I've got five different books now. Um, including the Imperishable Wonderland book. And I wouldn't be surprised if I end up by with 11 books by the end of the year that they seem to be proliferating. Um, and as long as I keep working on them, that's fine. You know, if, I, th- I feel like this sort of like when I was making the videos with sound, the talkies, you know, I was going between different topics. And partly that's just for my own interest so that I always have something to work on so I don't get bored. And, and also... You know, if I work on one of these books for half an hour or 45 minutes, I kind of get tired of it and, uh, or maybe an hour. I, it's like I'm ready for a break. But after that break, if I don't feel like going back to writing that book, I might very well feel like writing on another book, you know, so that each book has a different feel. Um, and that, that was one of the, the uh, techniques that Ray Bradbury claim that he used, you know, there, he always had something he was excited to write about. So, you know, if I get up to 11 books and that means at any given time, I'm excited to write on one of them, that's fine. And, you know, if that means that one book ends up being really fleshed out, um, and another book, you know, doesn't get much attention, well, it means I'm voting with my feet in terms of what I want to write about. I don't, I don't care. I, my view is that if, uh, if I'm writing every day, or almost every day and putting in real time and attention that, uh, you know, some, something's going to come out of this writing. Um, eventually if I think longer term, I think year to five years, you know, something will, uh, come out of it. So, you know, I, I think it's already starting to come out of it in the sense that someone who wanted to talk with me could look at, you know, even the outlines or the topics or, you know, what I've written down for some of the books and, and have something to discuss with me already. So, um, anyway, so that's where it's going. Um, I am right now very focused on trying to get the mini Kenrin and relational programming stuff down. Cause you know, there are other things I'd like to write. I'd like to write a screenplay, 
I've been reading a lot about writing screenplays and about movie making, actually. You know, I'd like to make some sort of cinema, even if it's just like me with a camera. I don't know. That's something I want to do for a long time, so I've been reading a lot about that. You know, the tech now is just so amazing. What you can do with a, a digital camera is ridiculous. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll go back at some point to the book on creative thinking or some of the other ideas I had, science fiction novel. Um, it's not like I don't want to write those, but right this second, you know, I'm, I feel compelled to get down a bunch of stuff on relational programming that's been in my head for almost 20 years now. Um, you know, really 20 years because I started working on this stuff in 2004, I think. So, yeah, been working on mini Canon 20 years or the precursor to mini Canon, I guess. Um, yeah, so I got 20 years of stuff that I want to get out and it will, it will take a while. It'll take a while. Um, and I want to get the imperishable stuff in shape. Uh, you know, I guess all of what I'm writing right now is sort of pre-writing for the imperishable stuff. I hope, I hope I can get past the, uh, preciousness. Um, part of me feels like I should just start writing on the imperishable. Um, what I want to do is start collecting the things that I find really interesting. So I'm, I, I am intimidated, but you know, for all these books, each one has a feel to me already. So the big, the big, bad, uh, boring brain dump, yeah, that feels like I can just keep adding to it, you know, uh, I'm not super excited sometimes, but I do, you know, like sometimes I'll go through, it's like, oh, okay, here's one thing right this second I feel like I could write uh, write about. So I'll, I'll, you know, bite off a little chunk and do some writing. So that, that I feel like will just kind of grow organically. Um, the confused big list of things, I think I'll just add to that periodically. The dubious and opinionated collection well, you know, I, I have been reading more papers, including um, a scheme, or sorry, mini Canon workshop paper. So, you know, I think that will help guide me and help me be good about reading papers that I normally don't like reading papers, actually. Um, but I just find it kind of painful. But anyway, if it's an interesting paper, I do do usually enjoy it, as long as it's reasonably well written. Even poorly written ones, if they're about something really interesting, that's fine. Um, and what else? So, how I think about relational programming. That one I'm pretty excited about, actually, although it feels a little a little scary. Um, but at least some of those, the, the way I think about things, I think I could write down um, reasonably. And then the imperishable book, you know, that feels a little precious to me. And um, maybe I just need to just go in there and start, you know, <laughs> having horrible rough outlines and, you know, start writing. That's probably the thing to do. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll next work on the imperishable and go with my best, uh, you know, version 0.1 of curation and what I think goes in that book. You know, I, I think that'd be a good plan because I... It, like I said, I think I'm being way too precious about it. Okay, well, that is um, my thoughts about writing books. Uh, probably a few more will pop into existence, uh, at least. And you know, I'm 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 not gonna be surprised if I get up to eleven books by the end of the year. And I'll just kind of write write on them in a biased, interleaving uh, search manner, just like in Mini Canron. And, uh, you know, some books might get starved out, and some books might get uh, a huge amount of attention. And we'll just see, you know, see at the end of the year uh, how the books look and how many books we have. All right. That's, uh, that's it. And this is all, you know, an attempt to get over my self-censorship and... Um, perfectionism, you know, so I think writing 11 books isn't such a bad idea. And I do, I do think, you know, that trying to write a single book as I have in the past that, ha that combines all of these different 
views of relational programming or topics. That's been tricky because each one, each one really does have a big feel. I mean, a different feel like, you know, you want to do like the little jewel like version of only the, the collected very best, most interesting relational programs like the Perishable Wonderland versus like literally here's everything that I think I know about relational programming. Those are such different books that I don't, I don't know how you put those in one one place. So I'm not going to try. I'm just going to let the books proliferate as necessary. Um, my, my only real concern is, is trying to get everything down. And then uh, over time, hopefully these will become more polished or Maybe they won't. Maybe, maybe this is effectively all pre-rewriting. I'm mean, all pre-writing for some other book that will artfully combine these uh, different topics, or maybe multiple books. I don't know. Um, but doesn't doesn't matter. I'm not I'm not worried about too much. I'll just you know I'll let the books kind of guide me, and uh, you know as I reorganize things and add to them, uh, I will see how it goes. If you have topics that you think uh, I should address or in these books, um, please let me know. I'm you know, happy, to, happy to include those things as long as those are things that I'm you know, interested in talking about. Even if I'm not interested in talking about them right now, I might, might include them in a list. Of, you know, I can include them in the topics at least and see where that goes. Uh, See if I feel like, you know, part, part of this is just driven by what I feel like working on at any given time, and um, that's fine. Okay, uh, that's it for now. I uh, hope you're doing well, and hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.